And we're back and we're moving into our second conversation for today. The Department of Environment is launching a new campaign helping us to understand more about how we are adding pollutants to the environment and it's called Stop the Pops Campaign. We have with us two senior environmental officers to tell us more about the campaign and uh, what, it, what type of pollutants they're talking about. So we have Anthony Mai and we have Leonidas Sosa. Good morning. Hey, good, good morning. morning. Thanks good morning, for having us. Thank you for having us on your show. Well, thank you for being here as well. It's a, it's a rather interesting topic, and I was telling you it, it is highly scientific, uh, the pollutants that we're talking about. But let's, let's just start about why this came into focus now. You had said that this is, in fact, a regional campaign that is being undertaken. Sure. Um, Marlene, first, of, first and foremost, let me just, again, uh, thank you for the invitation on Open Your Eyes. And I would like to thank our Belizean listeners for tuning in because the discussion about pers persistent organic pollutant is a very important discussion. And in fact, we believe that not much has been said about it in terms of um, building public awareness about pups to the general public. Pups are, are considered some very harmful chemicals and they are all around us and it is important now that we begin to share this information so we started this campaign called stop the pups mm -hmm. um, so that we could begin to build awareness and get some behavioral change from from the general public um, in, in in line with that we identified um, that people need to first identify uh, the sources and uses of pups mm -hmm. people need to learn um, how they could uh, reduce the exposure of pups to their family and uh, and their close they, 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 and themselves, and also to act by minimizing their exposures uh, exposure to pups. So the campaign is basically is just because we feel that there is not enough information out in the public about pups. Yeah. So the, the the Department of Environment, along with a regional um, a regional organization called the BCRC, has put this campaign together to again disseminate information so that people could learn about pups and if you will see by what you're sharing the information that is being shared the campaign that has been prepared has been prepared such that the terminologies that are used the messages that are sent out are easily understandable yeah. um, if you visit the website stopthepups.com there is a full flow of information on this website and the website is geared towards um, um, children going to school so, uh, the terminologies terminologies that are used are terminologies that are easily understandable yeah. so we believe that right now is the correct time for us to start this uh, this campaign you know i think all belizeans at our core just uh, based on the the nature that we are blessed to um, enjoy we, we all care about our environment and we talk about pollutants and oftentimes it's more that the, the things that we have traditionally heard about, you know, we worry about garbage, we worry about air pollution, we worry about um, water quality and, and things of that like. Now, when you talk about POPs, this is very different and in fact, I think one of the first steps in the campaign is being able to identify what you call these persistent occurring pollutants. Organic. Did organic. I get it? Organic. Organic. Thank you. Organic yeah. pollutants. Yeah. 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 Pop star is represents. Uh, well, it stands for um, persistent organic pollutants. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, over the uh, over the years in the 1990s, um, the use of persistent organic pollutants became a global environmental problem. So countries around the world agreed to this um, convention, to this multilateral environmental agreement mm -hmm. called the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. Okay, and um, Belize signed to this convention in, nine, in 2002 and uh, ratified the convention in 2010. Okay, and since then, um, we, the Department of Environment, became the focal point for all activities related, related to the convention here in Belize. 
So since then, we have been doing our part to um, conduct inventories and to see where POPs are being used in the country and if we are manufacturing, importing, etc. POPs. And with that information, um, the Belize developed uh, what we call a national implementation plan on persistent organic pollutants in, mm -hmm. in that was in 2008, to address um, the 12 um, persisting organic pollutants that the convention was trying to address at a global level. There were 12 persistent organic pollutants. And since then, up to 2019, um, the convention had added more pups to the list. And they added about 16 more pups and uh, which needs to be addressed also here in Belize. So because of that, um, through a, a regional project um, that um, we were implementing, um, Belize was able to update the national implementation plan to include uh, those additional um, 16 pups that are now under the convention. So. We are doing good progress in terms of managing pups here in Belize. We have our national implementation plan with several priorities and strategies on how we should go about managing pups in Belize. Yeah. Unfortunately for Belize, being a small developing country, we do not um, produce or manufacture any kind of pups here in Belize. And most of the pups that are listed under the convention uh, are, not, are, not, are no longer being used in Belize, except for a, a few of them. Um, although several things have been done in, in Belize to try to address the problem, um, awareness, um, outreach there informing the public has been an issue. Hence the reason we are trying to um, engage in this campaign to involve all parties, all stakeholders and the general public to get to know what POPs is all about and what are the, the impacts, the health impacts um, to humans and to the environment. So let's get into it. Tell us about the POPs that Belizeans uh, need to know about that we have been exposed to. Okay, so uh, th there are three factors that determine how severe um, POPs are. Again, remember that POPs is a, is a pollutant and what a pollutant is, is basically something that you put into the environment that eventually creates harm. Mm -hmm. So it will harm the, the environment, it will harm the, the wildlife and eventually it harms human beings. The reason why POPs is so important for us to regulate is because POP, the, it, just by the name of it, persistent organic pollutant, POPs has the ability to persist within the environment for an extremely long time. Yeah. Um, the, the, the chemical does not break down through physical means, through weathering, through anything. Um, and so it remains uh, for thousands of years. I mean, me, you, Leo, we won't be here and certain pups will still be within the environment creating damage. Uh, in the early 60s, uh, Marlene, um, Rachel Carson, which was uh, considered the, the, the mother of, of the environmental movement, wrote a book called Silent Spring. And her thesis, thesis based solely on, on pesticides, and she showed concretely that the unregulated use of these pesticides basically have impacts on the wildlife. And one of the impacts that she noticed was that the, the eggs from the bird, um, because the birds were being exposed to pesticides, the eggshells were very thin, and that did not give the, um, the bird time to hatch and basically died before it hatched. And so that is just one example of how pups impact uh, uh, wildlife, but there, there are many different type of impacts. But what, what she did, she wrote a book and the name of the book is Silent Spring and any environmentalist today should have that as one of their first read before you go into, <laughs> into anything. Yeah. It's a very good, uh, that, that book actually started the environmental movement. It actually contributed towards the establishment of the US EPA. But uh, I mean, enough about that. So <laughs> <laughs> No, but actually I, I wanted to go to that. So maybe we should do that now. Um, yeah. When you talk about pesticides, I know one of the things that we have identified in Belize is the agricultural runoff. And we know this from environmentalists when they do studies on the coral reefs that are miles out at sea. Yeah. So yeah. we know that what's taking place on farms run down into the rivers, then into the sea and take into living organisms. Yeah. So is that part of, um, would that be categorized as part of what we're talking about with POPs? 
Yes, actually there are, let me see, there are, there are three main attributes, if I could say, um, to pups, right? Uh, in, in terms of the factor of how pups uh, impact the environment and human being. Yeah. The first is that the substance, the substance chemical, the nature of it and how it behaves, that is something that, that needs to be considered. Secondly, the amount and the concentration that exists within a certain area is, is very important as well. And then uh, thirdly, how long it persists within the environment actually contributes to some of the harm that it does. So there are three main things that one should consider when determining how severe uh, the pups is and how much impact it will have on the environment. Uh, in addition to that, the, the, the main reason why pups is so important for us to study is because pups has, again, the list of chemicals, pups is a list of chemicals and all these chemicals have certain characteristics. One of the first characteristics it has is that it remains in the environment for a very, very long time. That's the reason it, it is called persistent. Um, they can also travel far and wide in, um, in processes using soil, water, and air. And so, for example, in Belize, we don't produce pups in Belize, but Belize is still being impacted by pups probably because of it being transferred through the air from maybe Mexico, Guatemala, etc. cetera. Um, and you would see, for example, pups ending up all the way in the Arctic circles where no one lives. There is no production of pups in that area but it has the capacity to travel over a large area. If it goes into the water, it will travel far. If it goes into the air, it will travel very far. It will be dispersed for a large area. Uh, thirdly, it bioaccumulates in fatty tissues of living organism. And so it moves up the food chain. It, it biomagnifies. So if an animal eats uh, another animal that has pups in it, that animal um, has pups in it. If it eats several animals, then the concentration begins to build up within the fatty tissues of these animals. And as you may, may um, um, know, that as you move farther up the, the food chain, the top predators are the ones who will have the greatest concentration of pups uh, in them. And then obviously human beings are the top predators. And so if we are not careful, most of what we eat, well, I don't want to say most, if we eat um, things with, like, with fatty tissues in it, uh, we may be able, we may be exposing ourselves to pups. So one of the things that you could do briefly to reduce your exposure to pups, for example, when you think about about game meat, about bush meat, you try to eat the lean meat. You, you take off as much fat as possible because that is where most of the toxins are. So you try to do that. Uh, thirdly, fourthly, there are also environmental toxins that can harm both human and and, and the environment. One of the important things is that. Um, Pops has the capacity to, to harm us as humans, and it has severe health implications if we are overexposed to these chemicals. One of the first things that pops out, and I think most people know this, is that um, Pops has been contributing to the cause of certain cancers, so it is car carcinogenic, but it also does nerve damage, it has, uh, and it disrupts your immune system, your endocrine system, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and so it is very important that we learn how to manage these type of chemicals um, um, better. So there are five different categories of pups. There are pesticides. Again, pesticides is the type of pups that most people are aware of. They are aware that pesticides are pups. But what they are not fully aware of is that there are other pups that are right within their immediate area, within their homes, in fact, um, and they are being exposed to it and they don't know. So. There, the first uh, category of, of pups is pesticides. You have uh, poly, poly, polychlorinated biphenyls, uh, which is PCBs. PCBs are found, for example, um, in the transformers up on the light posts. PCB is, um, is a type of oil, or they put PCB in the oil so that the oil has a high heat resistant. Um, the other type is the perifluorooctane sulfonic acid, which is PFOS. Um, we have some brominated flame retardants, and under that we have the polybrominated biphenyl eaters. We have the hexabromo biphenyl and the hexabromo cyclodudecane. Um, and then finally, we have the unintentionally release of pups. The brominated flame retardants, the category that I just mentioned, were developed commercially so that they could be placed in items for uh, fire retardant. And so there you could find them in, 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 in mattresses, 
you find them mostly in 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 vehicles in new cars in in the seats of the new cars in the dashboard of the new cars these chemicals are there so that they they don't they, they they're harder to catch fire um and then the unintended release of pups basically comes from the open burning of, of plastic so if you burn plastics in your backyard um you will be re reduced re releasing what they call uh, dioxins and, and furans which are two different types of pups and if you inhale these smokes over a long period of time again you could lead to um, later on you could develop certain type of cancers etc so it is very important that we that we learn this there is an important story that when we did training on this i, I learned that i was not aware of um uh, the story is that a lot of affluent people um we found the doctors found out that a lot of affluent people um, was catching cancer and they was wondering why because these people has the finances to, to live good to exercise uh, to eat right etc etc and what they later found out is that affluent people will normally change a new car they would buy a new vehicle every year every other year and what they found out is that whenever these new vehicles are made some of these same these brominated by them um, brominated flayed retardant chemicals will be placed within the dashboard and within the seat and you know you will drive with your seat with your glass raised your ac on and when you drive in the sun and the sun heats up this material basically you're you're enclosed you're in a, in a capsule and these chemicals are being exposed and you're bringing breathing it in on a daily basis and so they found out that this is one of the contribution to why some of the affluent people who may have the resources to eat right exercise and avoid some of these these talks these pups still end up with certain type of cancers so that was a very interesting um, um story to me in fact uh, one of the advice in terms of ex limiting your exposure to pups is that there is uh, certain toys made out of plastics um a good example is the little toys that you put in your bathtub with your baby when you're floating when you're bathing them you know the little the little the little um 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 the little duck that you move around and some other little floatable toys some of those toys actually contain um pups when you cook at home when you use your your non-stick utensil your non-stick pans some of these products are lined with pups and if we, if we are not careful uh we may be exposing ourselves much more than we need that's the reason why i said marlene from the beginning that most people think that pups is only um in the realm of pesticides Trust me, it is all around us. It is everywhere around us. In fact, most of the mattresses that comes from the United States are made of pups and we are sleeping on it um, on a daily basis and we are not aware of it. I think one of the interesting things that you, you just pointed out, well, pointed out several interesting things. Sorry, I, I got my mic situation fixed. Um, you, you pointed out quite a few things. One, I mean, how interesting is it that the new car smell that everybody covets may actually be contributing um, to illnesses? But yeah. some of these are uncontrollable. If I, if I purchase, let's say, a fireproof or fire-resistant um, mattress, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to save and keep myself safe in one way, but I may actually be exposing myself to another um, harm by the pollutants that it releases. Um, mm -hmm. The other ones are controllable. The burning of, of garbage, which most often includes plastic, is one that we know is a very common cultural practice. So yeah. um, how do you get the message out that uh, that is, it, it's not only harmful to the environment, which is one reason not to do it, um, but if that's not enough, the other one is that it can actually be detrimental towards your health. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, so, so this campaign hopefully will get that information out as much as possible. The Department of Environment has been trying for many years. Uh, we have a very robust, I should say, a very good public awareness team. Um, and we try to get as much information out as possible. So what this campaign is, Marlene, this campaign is, 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 is um, set up such that we do a lot of interviews like this, but we also go and we meet people. We, we, we have certain information that we want to include in the educational um, curriculum. We have flyers, we have billboards, um, we have Facebook pages, we have some, some videos that we want to do. In fact, I would like to take this opportunity now to invite people to visit the stopthepups.com website. Um, if you go to that website, there's a series of videos, there are some games, there are information that could help you to determine to know 
um, what you need to do to reduce your exposure, your exposure to pop. Well, th th thanks to, I, I think based on what you're saying in terms of burning garbage in your yard, the government of Belize, I think, has been doing a great job with dealing with solid, municipal solid waste management on a whole. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we just we, the, we are in the process, the government is in the process of expanding the uh, regional sanitary landfill and the they have expanded the transfer stations to most of the municipalities. So there in the near future, I hope Marlene that there will be no need for people to burn garbage in their yard because the solid waste management plan will reach all the different villages, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone will be incorporated into this national plan. That yeah. is the best option for us right now, because I, I mean, I, I, if you put your, if you put your foot in the shoes of someone who live in a rural area. Yeah. Uh, what you, else you, do you do with your garbage? Exactly. If you yeah. don't have a garbage collection system, then that might be um, one of the best options. But again, rather than burning it, you could still, you could still bury it. Mm -hmm. You could still find a nice pit. Maybe you, you have a farm, you, you find somewhere far, you, you dig your pit. You bury the garbage because uh, yeah. that, that is better than, than actually burning it. And Anthony, I, as we quickly run out of time, I can't let you not explain to me how the non-stick pans that we use are considered uh, a part of, of pops. Yeah, okay. Or so, Leo yeah. can take it too. I know Leo is still with okay, us. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah um, the, well, pops can be found in, in many items, okay, including... Um, those items that we use in the kitchen, um, it can be found in food, in, in, many, in many things in the air, but uh, it, it depends on where you buy those kind of, uh, of items. For example, the, the non-stick non pans. For example, um, countries around the world that are parties to the Stockholm Convention that I mentioned in the beginning, yeah. um, they had uh, committed um, to stop producing um, items that contain pops. Okay, so um, not all countries in the world are parties to the Stockholm Convention and and our friends in the north here, um, the United States of America, one of the biggest producers of items that we import here in Belize, they are not a party to the Stockholm Convention. So they are not obliged to do certain things and they can produce whatever they want. Okay, hence the reason Anthony mentioned the issue about mattresses. Interesting. Okay, so so if, if frying pans, non non-stick frying pans are made in the in the United States, so there's a high probability that it may con the may contain pops. You know, um, we're not saying they do, but it may contain pops. And but if you buy, let's say, a, a frying pan from Mexico, who is a party to the convention, they are obliged not to produce any kind of items that contain pups. So um, yeah. probably that might be some something safer to use. Interesting. Okay. So we talk of pesticides. Um, and let me just get some clarification here because I know we have a list of approved um, pesticides that can be used and banned um, and yeah. pesticides that you can't use. Uh, does that help to protect us from the pups and pesticides? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. In fact, um, uh, we, we have an entire organization yeah. uh, that deals with pesticides. It's the Pesticides Control Board, yes. of which um, the Department of Environment sits on, on, on the board itself. I think Leo, if I'm not mistaken, sits on the registration board and then the Chief Environmental Officer sits on the executive board. Uh, because again, when anyone wants to import a certain type of pesticides, it needs to be vetted and approved by the Pesticide Control Board. And in fact, when information arises to suggest that certain pesticides that we use in Belize is detrimental and extremely harmful, then there is a, there's a process for it to be phased out. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in the beginning, there were, there were 12 pups. They used to call them the Dirty Dozen, right? So these were Aldrin, uh, Chlordane, DDT, um, Deldrin, Eldrin, Heptachlor, some of these um, uh, pups were being used in Belize, but they have been banned for over a period of time because of the harmful effect. In fact, I think one of the most common uh, pesticides is, uh, is DDT. We used to use DDT, the, 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 the Ministry of Health used to go around spraying DDT to kill mosquito um, yeah. within, within, within the tongue limits, etc., etc. But they found out that that was uh, persistent, and, and so we, we stopped using that. And there's 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 definitely alternative uh, options for all the different pesticides that we use. 
there are chemical alternatives and non-chemical alternatives yeah. um, that we could use. But um, yeah, there's, there's a slew of them that we have gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. But again, there are 16 new pups that are still um, in the market and that we need to be careful of. And I think you said earlier to it because you know we're we're a part of a global community. It's not yeah. just what we produce; it's what's introduced uh, from other parts of the world as well. Yeah. So yeah. help us understand if you were to outline maybe the top four or five um, ways in which we may be exposed to pops or introducing pops into the environment. What would that be? I mean, I, I can't help but be fascinated by, you have the new car smell, the plastics, the fire yeah. retardant plastics. You yeah. have uh, Teflon pans made in countries that have not agreed to eliminate the use of pops. Yeah, yeah. What let, else? Let me, okay, let me, let me start by first explaining to you some of the risk factors of being exposed to pops, and then I'll, yeah. I will mention some of what you could do to reduce your, your minimize your, exposures, your yeah. exposure to pops. So, uh, again, POPs has been contributing to uh, causing certain cancers, mm -hmm. right, which is very serious. Um, secondly, damage the immune system, um, and 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 so it's a great chance to get uh, different type of because you reduce your immune system, you're at greater chance to get different diseases. Um, it also damages your nervous system. It damages your reproductive system and birth defects. It will cause birth defects. It damages your endocrine system, your male and female uh, organ, and eventually it could lead to death for extreme exposure. So what could you do to, to minimize exposure to pups? The first thing you could do, Marlene, is wash your hands regularly, right? You wash your hands with soaps regularly whenever you come into your house, whenever you leave your house, if you have touched anything um, that you believe may contain pups, you, you just wash your hands as often as possible. Secondly, you remove your shoes whenever you come into your house. You don't want to introduce any of these type of products. In fact, not, this is not only for pups, this is general, right? Any type of virus, any type of disease, any type of thing that may contain anything that could harm you, leave your shoes outside your house. And you should have a little locker out there and you, you put it in there. That's a, wow. that's a good uh, recommendation. Uh, do not let children chew, scratch, or chip plastic toy or electronics as they may release chemicals into their hands and mouth. Right, so I mentioned that some of the, for example, the HDP, whenever uh, children, you know, like to bite these plastic uh, toys, etc., that that is releasing some of these um, products may contain pups, and you're directly in ingesting these harmful products. Hmm. Um, the other recommendation is to wash your vegetables and fruits properly before you eat them, and preferably using running water. So you go to the market. When you come home on Saturday and you want to do your knife, you know, your beef soup, you want to do your salad, wash, you put on your faucet, rinse the vegetables so that the water keep running. And that will remove some of the, the, the residues that may still be on the, on, on the, veg, on the vegetable and that, that, that has not been removed properly. That will assist you as much, able, as, much as possible to get reduce of um, some of them. Yeah. The other thing is to use less plastic and glassware for food storage. And in the microwave or dishwasher, particularly those that the, those containers that have at no, the number three at the bottom, or that has V, it, if it says V in the bottom, those are, are are some of the bad ones. It says because they may contain polyvinyl chloride, v. which when you when it has V, the letter V uh -huh. or number three, because if you put them in a the microphone, uh, sorry, in the microwave. microwave yeah, they may, the heat may release some of the um, pesticides into your food and then you'll eat that food and you will be, uh, you could be exposed. One of the things I always tell my wife, um, every now and then I will eat a, a, a cup ramen and I, told my, I tell my wife, please don't put that cup ramen in the microwave because it's made up of styrofoam. Uh -huh. uh, when you heat up some of these um, products, Marlene, it releases the toxin and it goes into your food. So I tell her, you know what, buy my, my, my ramen. My <laughs> on the pot, <laughs> exactly. on the stove. You see, and exactly. not in a Teflon pan made in, in particular countries. Ex ex exactly, exactly. And then it sounds like we can have you back to have a whole conversation just on that. I agree, I agree, yeah. I agree. But just, just a few more things that yeah. you could do. It says avoid as much as possible using cling wraps and, and canned food. So cling wraps is that, like that's stretchy plastic that you yeah. normally use over a salad. So yeah. avoid using that, that has, that has Teflon and 
it, it could contain pups as well. Um, it says avoid the use of non-stick pan and utensils. Um, look for cookware that are free of PFOA, which is another type of, again, most of these things, Marlene, when you go and you buy them, read the label. Okay. If you just read the label, that will help you a lot to identify what you're getting. It says avoid water um, and steel repellent fabric. So if you, if you have a nice jacket that is water resistant and you feel good about it, you're going around to your friends. You don't know some of those uh, water resistance and fluid repellent and clothes actually may contain, may contain pups. Um, it says uh, one of the one of the I think things that everyone could 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 understand clearly is whenever you go to the store and you buy uh, bug repellent, you buy your fish or your bagel, yes. etc. These are pesticides, right? So you need to read the label to ensure that they don't have any harmful pesticides. There are alternatives, but if you buy the one that says um, pesticides containing, then leave that one because you're bringing in pesticides into your home while you're spraying it around and. People, I don't know, for some reason, they want to um, spray their kitchen and then you have your food in the kitchen, right? And yeah. so you, you don't, you don't do want that. bugs in your kitchen. I agree. Right? So it's just, yeah, so you, you don't uh, you don't do that. You try to get the alternative yeah. that is much more uh, much more environmentally okay. friendly. So, um, again, yeah. when you buy your food, you try to remove as much fat as possible because the pesticide stints to bioaccumulate and it, it, it loves pesticide will not dissolve in water but it will dissolve very good in fat. And so it wow. will stay within the fatty tissue of all animals. So if you buy pork, if you buy any, if you get a piece of the uh, meat or anything, trim off a piece of the fat and leave the, 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 the fat aside. All right. Um, well, we, we, are, we are running out of time now, but you are yeah, telling yeah. us so much. Um, I think that is, that is very useful. As you said, though, there is a website that people can go to if they want to know more. What's that website? Well, there's two websites that I want to mention. The first okay. one is stopthepops.com. Stop um, the pops. Yeah, so that one is, is more, more user-friendly. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's designed to capture your attention so that you can learn more about it. Yeah. But the other uh, website that I want to mention is www.pops.int. Uh, that is the Stockholm Convention's uh, website. And the Stockholm Convention is more for um, maybe a scientific community. If, if you really want to know um, scientific information about these products. If you're in, in tertiary level institution, for example, if you're doing a research on pups, if you want to know what is uh, Belize's commitment to the SACOM convention, then that website is, is for you. Um, for, for I think the everyday people, for people in school, um, the Stop the Pups uh, website is a good place to start to learn um, about pups. And, it, and it, 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 it was designed to capture um, everything in terms of the videos, you know, the things you hear, the things you see, yeah. uh, the way they present it, it's, it's very good. Okay. Well, yeah, we, go ahead. It, yeah, we do want to encourage um, teachers from the primary and secondary schools to visit the, the website that was, was just mentioned is stopthepops.com. And there's a lot of material in there that they can use to develop lesson plans okay. and uh, posters, brochures that they can use. Yeah. Um, in school, so we encourage all teachers um, to look at that uh, website, and also they can also contact the Department of Environment, the um, Public Awareness and Outreach yeah. Unit, and we can we, we will be able to assist them with um, several awareness material that they can use. At in there's some school. some cool videos too. That's we, we saw yes. those. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we, we've learned quite a lot in such a short term in such a short time, and I know that's the essence of your campaign to. Uh, identify, learn, and then you can take action um, to stop the pops. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Leo. And uh, of course, good luck and stay safe. Thank okay, you, Dr. Leo. Well. It's right. good to see you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Now we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking to a young programmer who has created a COVID-19 app. We'll get the details after the break.